Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Hey everybody, welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Uh, my name is Matthew, I will be one of your guides, and the other guide is sitting right across from me, and her name is Rachel. Hello, good day. Welcome to the podcast. Now today, peoples of podcast world, we're going to visit Prague, the capital city and largest city of the Czech Republic. We thought we would sort of break it down into some smaller pieces, so it'd be more manageable, like we tend to do. Mm -hmm. So first of all, Prague is sometimes called the city of a thousand spires um, because it has a lot of spires. Yeah, churches. Churches built. It, it's it's a really pointy city. Aside from its pointiness, Prague is also known for its um, just incredible architecture in general. But we'll get to that more in a, more in a different podcast. Mm -hmm. But first, let's take a little stroll, Matt, shall we, across Prague's most iconic bridge. Absolutely. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Charles Bridge. It stretches 516 meters across the Voltava River, and it functions as the primary pedestrian route between the Old Town Square, that's on the east side of, of the bridge, and the Lesser Town, which is on the west side. Now, the Charles Bridge is most commonly visited for two reasons. The first is the amazing view. Check this out. If you're standing in the center of the bridge, let's say, you can see almost all of Prague, and with the water flowing beneath you from the river, it is most excellent. Now, the other reason is because of all these leering statues that are staring at me right now that I feel very uncomfortable about. <laughs> these virtual statues. Yeah. The Charles Bridge is the oldest bridge in the city of Prague, and it is lined with statues of saints. Mm -hmm. And, Matt, you might have a reason to be a little leery and afraid because Prague is one of those cities that has a very um, ghostly reputation. Oh. If you take a ghost tour of the city, it's one of the areas where you'll stop. If you want to learn more about that in particular, it's an article on our site. Go check that out, and you can learn more about the paranormal history of Prague. Now, if you make it all the way across the Charles Bridge and you're not stopped by any ghostly apparitions, you can make it to the Old Town Square. And once you're here, you get to check out Prague's medieval astronomical clock, which is one of the coolest clocks on the planet. So it's a 15th century clock, and it's just amazing, especially considering how long it's held up. I mean, there's been a little bit of reconstruction, maybe a little bit of rebuilding over the years, but pretty much it's it's in good shape. Mm -hmm. So it has um, this astronomical dial, which is kind of like an astrolabe. And so it, this one shows the position of the sun and the moon. And as the name would imply, this clock depicts the medieval perception of the universe, so not, not the way we understand it now. So you've got the Earth positioned right at the center of the clock, and then everything else is moving around it because... That's how we thought the cosmos functioned back in the day. Right. And on the clock hands, you've got signs of the sun and the moon that then orbit around the Earth. Then you've also got three different circles, and I like this a lot because you, you have three different times that are represented as the clock goes around. So you've got on the outer circle, the old Czech time. In the inner circle, you've got Babylonian time. Also, if you want to know the regular time, the way you would learn it, uh, say here, in the center of those two dials, you've got the Central European time. Okay, so it does measure current actual yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. That's the that's the one you can see here in the Roman numerals. This one is kind of off the beaten path. It's pretty well known, but it's not necessarily, not all tourists, I guess, would know about it. Located near the Charles Bridge, it's a memorial wall that's been spray painted with all sorts of graffiti that's related to John Lennon and the Beatles and peace. There's a big image of John Lennon, like you'll find lyrics from Beatles songs, messages of peace. Oh yeah, it's, it's all over the wall. And it's, it's mostly because back in the day, when the government was, let's say, a bit oppressive, the youth would go there and kind of write this stuff as, as a way of protesting against their oppression. Because John Lennon stood for peace a lot of times, for love, he, a lot of his songs were about that. Pacifism, mm -hmm. freedom, yeah. So he was kind of a hero to the Czech people during this time. Absolutely. During the communist regime, they kept putting up the wall and, and the government kept whitewashing it to yeah. cover it up and people kept putting it back up. Mm -hmm. And so after the communist regime fell, they kept it up and it became this sort of well-established kind of piece of history. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my wife is obsessed with John Lennon and I cannot wait to take her here one day. You think she'd like that? I think she would definitely like that. She'd take like 400 pictures? Yeah, sure. So that is a little bitty slice of Prague. We hope you've enjoyed it. And that's really just a taste. 
Um, we will definitely be back later to talk more about the history and the architecture and the pretty much awesomeness of this city. Yes, there will be a whole other episode. Ladies and gentlemen, take care, good night, and remember, war is over if you want it. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And let us know what you think. Email travelpodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.